Hi everybody, it's Kathy here. How are you doing today? So I wanted to do, um, in this live stream, I wanted to talk about what's the difference between channeled guidance and intuitive guidance because I'd never even considered there was a difference that um, until I really started doing the channeling and, and um, as in like verbally channeling with clients over the last two three months and um, I just thought it would be quite interesting to share that because they there are quite a few differences so if you are joining me live or whether you catch the replay do say hi if you've got a question or any comments or if you've uh, had some interesting experiences yourself channeling do please pop a comment in the box it would be really good to hear how you've experienced things for yourself so what I'm going to be talking about is just from my experience because I do think that for everybody who does channeling it has to be different we are all unique individuals and we've all got different stories we've got different experiences and different knowledge um different soul missions and I think that's really important you know but if you are drawn to channeling either for yourself or for others to access uh guidance that's not come through your mind so that it's really free of influence from your ego then it's really important that you find your way of, of doing it that feels good for you and um, you know there's more and more people who are doing this at the moment i love how i'm seeing it in so many different circles that i'm in through business um, where spirituality and business is starting to really be the norm in, in lots of circles. I love it. Um, so, you know, and if, you, if you're a, a spiritual business person, do please connect, you know, um, say hi, um, come on over to my profile and, and um, friend me and, uh, or leave a comment on my page. But, you know, there's lots of, uh, different networks now that are growing which really do have a strong spiritual base but are very much focused on uh, business growth and success as well as personal growth so um, I was going to say okay so yes there's there are lots of people now doing um, teaching others how to channel um, and there's lots of different courses that you can go on lots of people who um, lots of people who will give sessions and um, it's all about you know there's, there's a lot that you can learn from it and um, if you're drawn to it then there's no accident you know there'll be something about who you are at that soul level and what shapes you in your life that makes you ideal for it but don't expect to uh, be able to channel like um, uh, Esther Hicks or Daryl Anker who channel Abraham and Bashar um, you know they channel in a really specific way with real speed and such a personality and uh, you know they're very unique but that's their way and don't expect to bring through really high dimensional information and technology technological accuracy about the evolution of the planet and humanity because that might also not be what you're best here to do as a channel. It might not be what you're suited to. And don't expect to have archangels and ascended masters and star beings and recognisable higher guidance um, whose names you might have heard of. Don't expect them to clamour to deliver their messages through you either. Because again, that might not be what is aligned with your soul mission. And also don't worry if when you channel that the information that comes through you actually sounds like something that you would say yourself because it's, it's like the, from my perspective it's like the guides they choose you they choose who you are based on what I've said like your abilities your talents your story your awareness your your mission and so they will that is no accident that they've chosen you. So just play with it. Channeling is a wonderful way of really learning to trust yourself and building a bridge between you and, and the divine, you and the divine guidance. So as I say, just play with it, have fun, have no expectations, and just see what happens. 
So how I experience channeling is, um, you know, I'm getting results simply by just like, opening a space for my guides. It's like I step back inside myself. I go into a meditative space and I create, uh, I create a space and I step back inside myself and I set the intention for my guides to use my body and my voice and uh, the filters of my knowledge and experience. And I set my intention to bring through whatever is the highest um, possible vibrational energy and guidance for whoever I'm working with. It's not simply information that's delivered through me to just be taken in at head level by someone, uh, which they then have to <clears throat> digest and implement. It's much, much deeper than that. It's about holding someone in such a way that they connect with the power of their heart, with the greatness of who they are, with their own knowing and with their power and with the truth inside them. And uh, it's really enlightening and healing. It's, it's so much more than just information. And it seems like for each person who comes, they get given uh, really bespoke tools to use so that they can take these tools away and use them in their life for their specific situation. When, when you can be in this energy and you can sort of experience this, somebody holding you in this space or you're in the, the bubble held in this space, it really means you, that you get to blast through any sense of self-doubt, any fear, and it sort of pulls it out at the roots. So your story, uh, it just gets transformed and you no longer react in the same way. So you actually get to respond consciously and um, then you get to choose how you want to be. So it's very powerful. And the, the clarity that you receive, it just means that you know, you just know inside what the right steps, the right next steps are for you. So, so that's kind of how I have experienced it when I've been working with clients. And as I say, I've not been, I haven't been doing these kind of sessions for too long, maybe two, three months now of actually verbally channeling. Um, and it's not like any channeled sessions that I've ever received from anyone else. And uh, for a while, I really judged myself that I couldn't do it as I'd expected or, or hoped to. Or I just thought I should be doing it um, like other people did. You know, I thought I should be able to channel Archangel Michael or Saint Germain or, you know, any any of the people, the beings that you might have heard of. Um, and it that just wasn't naturally coming to me. And I really compared myself and I just thought I was doing it wrong or I judged myself as less than. But having I kind of parked that and I went ahead with it anyway because I was just having fun. I was playing. I kept in that energy when you're playing you're in the energy of possibility and it's um so much more expansive than the energy of should or being serious so what by doing that and um, just holding the space i the people who came for the sessions it, it, doing it my way um they just got such incredible results and it really it really surprised me because um a lot of it felt like it was just me um Felt like it was the same kind of information that I might share, a lot of it, not all of it, uh, but it didn't sound quite like me. And it wasn't necessarily using the lexicon that I might use, the words that I might use. And it certainly wasn't using the tone or the, um, it wasn't really the energy that I might naturally be. So it did feel different from, from the inside, watching what was going on. Um, but, you know, these results were the most important thing, obviously. So I was able to let go of those concerns really quickly and just embrace my way. And, um, you know, because it just seems to really be working for people. So if you get into channeling, just trust that you will find your way. There will be a way that is perfect for you. So I wanted to kind of just share a few of the differences that I've seen you know, if you're curious about what this might, the differences might be between uh, channel guidance and intuitive guidance, um, these are the kind of, these are some of the uh, things that I've seen over the, over the last two, three months, um, just from my experience. So to start with, channel guidance, it, it comes from a higher frequency. 
And so it creates a, a much higher vibrational field for the session. The caveat being that you have to specify that in your intention. You know, don't just assume that you're uh, channeling higher guidance just because you're opening yourself up and you're opening up your fields to bring through non-physical guidance, non-information uh, from, from non-physical beings. You know, get proper training uh, so that you don't leave yourself open to parasite entities that have their own agendas um, because they will attach to you. It's like you're um, when you're in that space and you're connecting and you're opening up, you're like this light in the darkness, like and um, and like moths get drawn to you, like moths, to, like what am I say? It's like moths being drawn to a light. You know, that's you're shining that brightness of who you are in the darkness, and you just unless you specify and create very clear boundaries by stating what energies you are and aren't willing to accept into your energy fields, i.e. only the highest vibrational energy available and no energies lower than your own vibration, then entities can actually attach to your energy field and they can start to really drain your energy. And this might show up in your life as, as just things that just whatever you do don't seem to be working out. I, I had one. Uh, I had a, a psychic surgery that it took about two hours for two people, two shamans were working on me to to release this thing that had been in me for a number of years. Uh, and I can quite understand how it had got in because I didn't know about this at the beginning. We were playing too much and um, I hadn't been kind of properly trained um, with what I was doing. So uh, they managed to re release this energy it was stuck in my base chakra. And I swear to you, I felt like I was sitting on a washing machine. The energy was that strong as they were working on me. These, and it was a distance healing, but it felt so physical. And um, lots of things changed in my life as a result of it. So, you know, this is real stuff. There's a lot more going on there beyond what your eyes can see. So, um, so clear boundaries definitely uh, and often the guidance the guidance for, uh, that's channeled it's uh, when it is higher vibrational guidance is often delivered in, in a manner that isn't like I said before it's not how I would normally speak um, it doesn't use the words that I might use and it sometimes even gives guidance that my mind would uh, you know be questioning I think the first time I did it when I was being interview my guides were being interviewed on a, a podcast by an interviewer and the, the the guidance that was coming through me or the entity that was speaking through me it was saying talking about things that I didn't even agree with and um but I just kept talking and that was kind of it was really helpful to know that I was actually channeling that rather than just speaking what I I thought um or believed because um, I, I, I could feel the fight going on inside me, but and, um, you know, but sometimes that happens. Uh, and another difference with channeling is that you don't really need any background information before in advance, you know, before someone comes to you. So intuitive guidance, on the other hand, it's um, it's more delivered via the filter of your personality before it's expressed so for me it's like it, it, it when I connect intuitively because I work with clients intuitively as well um, it's like I'm tuning into higher guidance but I've also got over 25 years of spiritual development experience and and knowledge and it's like um, I can tune into that and by coming from that place that I can I'm much more able to create empathy with a client it's like I'm there with them me my personality self and so it creates that connection and there's a more of a an understanding about where someone is on their path and a sense of that connection so um yeah so when I'm just using intuitive guidance it's uh it, it tends to be softer more gentle because that's me that's my personality traits um, it feels like me and it's just uses my normal speaking voice obviously and um, it, it, it really also it helps me to have a little bit of background information about where someone's at before we start where they're at where they want to get to so that's part of 
uh, some of the differences. The, another difference with higher uh, with channeling is that there's no thought involved. It's um, the, if the intention is to bring through the, the highest vibrational support possible, and then you step out of the way, and um, it's just about speaking whatever comes. It sort of bubbles up. For me, it just bubbles up from inside, and I just open my mouth and, and say whatever comes into my, it doesn't even come into my head, it just comes out. It, it, it passes my conscious um, thought, really, uh, and there's no conscious interpretation, uh, no need for me to understand, and there's no attachment to how, it re how it's received, and that's, I think that's really important, that's a really important difference. I just trust that however it comes out is perfect, and it's the perfect way for the client to hear it. And if it triggers something in them, then, uh, you know, that's perfect too. That's because it bring, it's bringing something to the surface that can be released. And that's what we are then there to work on in the session. Alternatively, when, you, um, when intuition comes in, it's often uh, processed and interpreted internally. Uh, and you kind of go, it sort of slows it down a bit, it slows down the process because you, when you're taking it in, you're um, deciphering the meaning and then you're converting it into words and you get a feel uh, of where the client is at and, the, and it's about being able to communicate those words in a way that you believe or feel or think that they will most get them. So it, it does really, uh, it changes the vibration and it sort of slows it and it steps it down to some degree. And also, you know, as a as a, a guide or a coach doing and in, giving intuitive guidance, sometimes you might get, depending on who the client is or your own stuff that's being triggered by what's been coming up, you might have some attachment to receiving it and up to, to them receiving it. And, um, you know, some of your stuff might get in the way, it colours the information a bit, um, especially if you might have something around wanting to wanting to stay connected, wanting to be liked, wanting to be respected and valued. You want to make sure that you're doing a great job, or you know that that what's coming through is is uh, working for them. So uh, you know, with with channeled information, none of that gets in the way. So also, it, when I'm channeling, uh, it's my personal intention that higher soul level information is being asked for that's what i'm asking for and that might not be what the client's asking for um it might not be what they're wanting to hear or what they expect to hear and uh but it is what will get them into alignment with their soul's path in the most direct and efficient way but it might not be a comfortable way it might be something that they find very challenging uh, and it and it will raise the ego to kind of try and hold hold you out. Um, but the thing is, with channeled uh, this uh, channel guidance or energy, it doesn't let people stay in their story. You know, it sees through the ego stuff, all that BS that the ego brings up, all the ways it tries to avoid. It just doesn't stand a chance. This is such direct, clear, uh, strong energy, and it's sort of really. Um, it, it takes the it, it just lifts the lid on what the ego is doing so you really get to see it so and it can be very forceful it can be dynamic very assertive when necessary it, do, it can also be very gentle um, but it won't let the ego maintain its power or resistance and it comes across in a very detached way so it's it's much faster on the opposite side intuitive guidance may come across as less assertive but it does create a much sense, uh, a much greater sense of connection and support. And um, you know, on the on the downside, if a client's ego or personality is strong, then they are more likely to fight the guidance because they might see it coming from you rather than from um, from a higher source. Um, especially if the ego really does, you know, feel like it's being found out and it's challenging. It will up much more of a vice it will show more re resistance so obviously this is going to be a lot more slower pace because you're going to be fighting with the ego more now there's probably loads more differences than this um but this is but this is some of the ways that i can think of for now just to give you an idea how they differ uh, at least for me 
um, you know, as I said, there's no one way to channel and finding your way to channel is, that's all part of the fun. So I said in the, um, the details that I'd share a little cool process that helped me build my confidence in channeling that you can try for yourself to get some clarity and to get some answers that feel true for you. Because when you have clarity, you can take soul aligned action and that really can change your life for the better. And it, you know, it does it in a really uh, powerful and empowering way. And it, it just feels, it starts to put you much more, more back in flow. So this is what I did before I got in, a long time ago, uh, before I did the verbal channeling. And it was about getting my head out of the way for the first time to bring through guidance. And I did it through writing. So um, it, I was inspired to do this, first of all, through uh, doing morning pages, which is um, one of the chapters that Julia, Cameron, Julia Cameron, uh talks about in her, um, oh, I can't even remember what this book's called. Julia, oh, how crazy is that? It's a great book. <laughs> I can't remember. Anyway, Julia Cameron, um, she, she teaches about creativity and flow. And um, so she has this section called Morning Pages. Morning Pages is essentially a way of just, it's stream of consciousness writing where you choose, you choose to write three pages of just writing straight from your head. Uh, you don't censor it. You, you, if you can't think of anything to say, you just write. I can't think of anything to say. Uh, you write down all the moany, um, critical, uh, any words that just come to you. You write all of that out. You just pour it out on the page, and you just don't censor it. And after uh, a few days, uh, you know, if you're in a really sticky place, it really helps to get all of that junk out of the way, and then. Underneath it, you tend to have um, much more deeper creative thoughts that comes from a higher place. So I'd been playing with this because it's a great way of just writing from the flow and not holding back. Um, and then I thought, maybe you've heard of the book um, or the series of books called Conversations with God but by Neil Donald Walsh. So uh, in this book, Ah, oh, thanks, Elle. It's The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. Thank you. <laughs> um, Neil Donald Walsh, he was, uh, I think he, he's, he's a Christian and he used to have conversations with God and felt uh, guided by him. But then it, it got to a point where it seemed like his guidance or his connection stops and he got into a really low place. And at one point he then started uh writing and he'd you know be moaning he'd be mo writing down questions saying you know why have you deserted me where are you and what uh you know i guess he was pouring out his heart and um he when he started writing he found the answers were then coming through his pen and he created a process where he would write a question and then god or his sense of god would write the answer and so he created this Q&A series and he did it over a number of different books and um, so I, I was really familiar with that series and I just thought well I, that could be a really fun thing to try and so I started um, doing it myself in my journal so I because I'd practiced already that sense of uh, free writing and what you do is you uh, so you get into a nice relaxed space maybe light a candle uh, make sure you're not going to be disturbed and you just set an intention to connect deeply with your inner guidance and make the space sacred so it's important you know it's time for you to connect deeply with yourself so first of all you, what you do is you write your name and you write a colon so Kathy colon and then you write your question so for example um, what do I have to learn from XYZ situation who, who do I need uh, to be in order to create X, Y, Z in my life? Uh, what is the higher purpose of such and such going on in my life right now? Uh, why am I so triggered by so-and-so right now? And what do I have to learn from him or her? And so you write the question and then after the question, you write the, um, whether that it might be God, colon, source, the universe, your guides, 
whatever is the right uh, name. Uh, so you write that and then again you step back out of your head, you get out of your own way and you just start writing and um, you know it might be you might feel stuck at first so just write anything but then because your intention is that you're connecting with with higher guidance you'll find that it starts to come out through your pen on the paper and um, you know just you, as long as you set your intention to connect only with the, the highest vibrational guidance available that's what will come through you and it just it, it what I've discovered was that very wise loving advice uh, and words that were much more generous and kind than I might have used towards myself came out and you know? so I realized I just I wasn't just inventing it uh, it wasn't just coming from my head and it felt very amazing and deeply honoring the kind of things that I was writing so have a play with that it's a it's a really powerful little tool to use for, for your journaling it's another way of doing journaling and it should give you um, some really good clear guidance if you've got some um, difficult things coming up or you're feeling stuck or lost so do try it um, and if you would like to try a channeling session or have a series of sessions I've still got my um, half price channeling summer sessions happening at the moment so um, you can find some more information about that at kathyballard.com forward slash channeling offer channeling hyphen offer um, I'll put the link in the um, in, in the description um, but, but just as an, an example of how this can go like yesterday I had a session with a client and uh, she wrote a testimonial I just noticed it on Facebook a few minutes ago and she says after a very emotional and brilliant channeled session with Kathy yesterday I've had the most splendiferous authentic day today with my new angel companion Amos <laughs> so we connected her to um, her higher guidance which she had never knew she could do before and it came through and it, it just opened her up to being able to feel it and to trust uh, that she was supported because she felt really alone at that time and she uh, by connecting with her higher guidance it sort of made her feel that she wasn't doing this this um, this life on her own and that she has that uh, support and guidance with her all the time um, so she, today she said she she felt really comfortable she was going for uh, creating a putting some proposals into a new big potential job and she got two she's I've been asked to su submit two new proposals which she's really excited about so it turned out to be a really exciting powerful day for her based on just a whole bunch of things that we shifted in her energy and her limiting beliefs that we shifted and some emotional blocks that she had and um, beliefs that things were possible so these are all the kind of things that can come up and a lot of it's to do with um, if, you know if we go the, the information will come through you can ask questions but then quite often it will take you into some kind of um, healing or energy clearing around your uh, childhood sometimes it might be past life stuff uh, it could be anything that comes up really and then you get given a whole bunch of different tools to be able to manage uh, and move forward so you feel empowered and you, you just come away with a sense of everything is possible and we really connect you into your vision of, of what you want for your life that feels really aligned so if that sounds like something that you'd be interested to, to um, experience do get in touch it would be lovely to do a session with me with you uh, a real honor so if you've got any questions now just do pop them in the box and uh, otherwise I shall be back next time and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you then thanks for joining me bye for now